English 9, Book 1 Unit 1 Local Environment Getting Started Activity 1 Listen and read There are so many pieces of pottery here, Foam. Do your grandparents make all of them? They can't because we have lots of products. They make some and other people make the rest. As far as I know, Bak Chang is one of the most famous traditional craft villages of Hanoi, right? Right. My grandmother says it's about 700 years old. Wow. When did your grandparents set up this workshop? My great-grandparents started it, not my grandparents. Then my grandparents took over the business. All the artisans here are my aunts, uncles and cousins. I see. Your village is also a place of interest of Hanoi, isn't it? Yes. People come here to buy things for their house. Another attraction is they can make pottery themselves in workshops. That must be a memorable experience. In Vietnam, there are lots of craft villages like Bat Chang. Have you ever been to any others? I've been to a conical hat-making village in Hue. Cool. This is my first one. Do you think that the various crafts remind people of a specific region? Sure. It's the reason tourists often choose handicrafts as souvenirs. Let's go outside and look around the village. A closer look, one. Pronunciation. Activity 5A. Listen to the speaker read the following sentences and answer the questions. One. The craft village lies on the river bank. Two. This painting is embroidered. 3. What is this region famous for? 4. Drums aren't made in my village. 5. A famous artisan carved this table beautifully. Activity 5B. Now listen, check and repeat. 1. The craft village lies on the river bank. 2. This painting is embroidered. 3. What is this region famous for? Four. Drums aren't made in my village. Five. A famous artisan carved this table beautifully. A closer look, one. Pronunciation. Activity 6A. Underline the content words in the sentences. Practice reading the sentences aloud. 1. The Arts Museum is a popular place of interest in my city. 2. This cinema attracts lots of youngsters. 3. The artisans mould clay to make traditional pots. 4. Where do you like going at weekends? 5. 
We shouldn't destroy historical buildings. Communication Activity 1 Nick, me, Jung and Mai are planning a day out to a place of interest for their class. Listen to their conversation and complete their plan by filling each blank with no more than three words. So we've decided that we're going to Green Park. Yeah, it's the best choice. We can go there by bus. And the bus stop is opposite our school. We have to make sure everybody turns up at the school gate at 8am. I'll stick a notice on the board then. What about food and drink? I think each person should bring their own lunch. Good idea. But we need someone to buy drinks for everyone. What about Nya? She lives next to the school and there's a supermarket near her house. Right. We'll need some team building games to play as well. Like tug of war? I'll prepare them. OK, Nick. And Tun can prepare some fun quizzes. Right. We'll reach the park at about 9am. We can look round and then gather at the big playground to play the games and do the quizzes. We'll have lunch at about 11.30. What about the afternoon? There's a traditional painting village about one kilometre from the park. We can walk there. The artisans will show us how to make paintings and we can also make our own. Great! We'll go there at about 1.30pm and take the bus back to school at 5pm. Skills 2 Activity 1 Describe what you see in each picture. Do you know what places they are? Listen and check your answers. I love history, so my place of interest is Vietnam National Museum of History. There's an extensive collection of artefacts tracing Vietnam's history. They're arranged chronologically from primitive life to modern times. It's also near Hoan Kim Lake and the Old Quarter, so you can spend time looking around and exploring Vietnamese culture. I'm fascinated by traditional handicrafts. At weekends, I usually go to Bac Chang, a pottery village not far from Hanoi Center. My friend's relatives live there and they own a workshop. Every time I go there, they teach me how to make things, such as pots, vases or bowls. I'm learning to paint on ceramics now. Hanoi Botanical Garden is the place I like. There are lots of trees from different countries, a lake and a small hill. I usually climb up the hill and read books at the top because there's a large lawn. After that, I go down and feed the pigeons. Sometimes I just sit on the bench watching people dancing or playing sports. It's a nice place for those who love nature and quietness. Skills 2 Activity 2 Listen to what these students say and decide if the statements are true or false. I love history, so my place of interest is Vietnam National Museum of History. There's an extensive collection of artefacts tracing Vietnam's history. They're arranged chronologically from primitive life to modern times. It's also near Hoan Kim Lake and the Old Quarter, so you can spend time looking around and exploring Vietnamese culture. I'm fascinated by traditional handicrafts. At weekends, I usually go to Bac Chang, a pottery village not far from Hanoi Center. My friend's relatives live there and they own a workshop. Every time I go there, they teach me how to make things, such as pots, vases or bowls. I'm learning to paint on ceramics now. Hanoi Botanical Garden is the place I like. There are lots of trees from different countries, a lake and a small hill. I usually climb up the hill 
and read books at the top because there's a large lawn. After that, I go down and feed the pigeons. Sometimes I just sit on the bench watching people dancing or playing sports. It's a nice place for those who love nature and quietness. Skills 2 Activity 3 Listen again and complete the table. Use no more than three words for each blank. I love history, so my place of interest is Vietnam National Museum of History. There's an extensive collection of artefacts tracing Vietnam's history. They're arranged chronologically from primitive life to modern times. It's also near Hoan Kim Lake and the Old Quarter, so you can spend time looking around and exploring Vietnamese culture. I'm fascinated by traditional handicrafts. At weekends, I usually go to Bac Chang, a pottery village not far from Hanoi Centre. My friend's relatives live there and they own a workshop. Every time I go there, they teach me how to make things, such as pots, vases or bowls. I'm learning to paint on ceramics now. Hanoi Botanical Garden is the place I like. There are lots of trees from different countries, a lake and a small hill. I usually climb up the hill and read books at the top because there's a large lawn. After that, I go down and feed the pigeons. Sometimes I just sit on the bench watching people dancing or playing sports. It's a nice place for those who love nature and quietness. English 9, Book 1 Unit 2 City Life Getting Started Activity 1 Listen and read Hey Paul, over here Hi Zung How's it going? Getting over the jet lag? Yes, I slept pretty well last night. Hey, thanks so much for showing me around today. No worries, it'll be good fun. So, are you from around here? Me? Yes, I was born and grew up here. Sydney's my hometown. It's fabulous. Is it an ancient city? No, it's not very old, but it's Australia's biggest city and the history of our country began here. Wow! So what are the greatest attractions in Sydney? Well, its natural features include Sydney Harbour, the Royal National Park and Bondi Beach. Man-made attractions such as the Royal Botanic Gardens, Sydney Opera House and the Harbour Bridge are also well known to visitors. What about transport? Public transport here is convenient and reliable. You can go by bus, by train or light rail. Taxis are more expensive, of course. And is Sydney good for shopping? Of course. You know, Sydney's a metropolitan and multicultural city, so we have a great variety of things and foods from different countries. I'll take you to Paddington Market later, if you like. Wonderful. What about education? Are there many universities? Sydney has five big universities and some smaller ones. The oldest of them was set up in 1850, I believe. Oh, it sounds like a good place to get higher education. I like this town. A Closer Look 1 Pronunciation Activity 4 Listen and repeat, paying attention to the difference in the underlined pronouns. Circle the pronouns that sound strong. 
one. Can you come and give me a hand? Okay, wait for me. Two. Did you come to the party last night? Yes, but I didn't see you. Three. Look, it's him. Where? I can't see him. Four. They told us to go this way. Well, they didn't tell us. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five A. Listen and mark the underlined words. As weak or strong. One. Is he there? No, everybody else is, but he's gone home. Two. Do you know that woman? Her? Uh, no, I don't recognise her. Three. I'm afraid we can't stay any longer. What do you mean, we? I've got plenty of time. Four. Look, everybody's leaving. What about us? Shall we go too? Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Listen and write the missing word in each gap. Suzanne lives in Bangkok with her husband and two children. Her office is seven kilometers away, but it takes her two hours to get there by car every day. Some cities have problems with pollution, crime, or bad weather. Here we have traffic jams, she says. Before going to the office, she has to take her children to school, so she sets off at five a.m. The children sleep until they arrive at school. Then Suzanne begins her journey to the office. In the evening, the traffic is even worse. Traffic moves in the city centre at half a kilometre an hour. In rainy weather, it doesn't move at all. But why is it so bad? In the past, more people moved around Bangkok by boat. Now, so many people have a car, and there aren't enough roads in the city. The SkyTrain and Metro can help a bit, but they are limited in range and don't cover all parts of the city. Skills two. Listening. Activity three. Listen again and choose the correct answer. Suzanne lives in Bangkok with her husband and two children. Her office is seven kilometers away, but it takes her two hours to get there by car every day. Some cities have problems with pollution, crime, or bad weather. Here we have traffic jams, she says. Before going to the office, she has to take her children to school, so she sets off at five a.m. The children sleep until they arrive at school. Then Suzanne begins her journey to the office. In the evening, the traffic is even worse. Traffic moves in the city centre at half a kilometre an hour. 
In rainy weather, it doesn't move at all. But why is it so bad? In the past, more people moved around Bangkok by boat. Now so many people have a car, and there aren't enough roads in the city. The Sky Train and Metro can help a bit, but they are limited in range and don't cover all parts of the city. English Nine, Book One, Unit Three: Teen Stress and Pressure. Getting Started. Activity One. Listen and read. Hi, Foop. Where's Mai? Isn't she coming? She said she was too tired and didn't want to go out. She's been staying up late studying for the exam. Does she need to be that stressed out? Maybe not. But my parents always expect her to get good grades, and she doesn't want to disappoint them. They want her to go to a top college and study medicine. Really? She told me she wanted to be a designer. Yes. That's why she's been a bit tense lately. She doesn't know what to do. My parents said design graduates wouldn't find jobs easily, and they wanted her to get a medical degree. Oh, I understand. Sometimes I wish my parents could put themselves in my shoes. Anyway, my needs to take a break. I'll call and ask her if she wants to go and see a film with us tomorrow. Oh, I doubt it. She's already fully booked for the weekend with her maths class, English class, judo class, and music lesson. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five. Listen to the recording. And practice saying the sentences. Pay attention to the way the verb be is pronounced. One. Where are you? You aren't at the bus stop. I am at the bus stop, but I can't see you. Two. Are you busy right now? Yes, I am. Sorry, could you wait for a minute? Three. Is Ronya in? No, she's out ice skating. But it's so cold. It is, but she's got all her warm clothes on. Four. Wasn't Bill disappointed about the exam result? He was, but he was hiding it well. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity six. Look at the following sentences and underline the verb forms of be, which should be stressed. Then, listen to the recording to check and practice. One. You aren't worried about the exam. Good for you. I am worried, but I try not to show it. Two. Do you think Jack is good at Japanese? He is, but he's a bit shy to speak it. Three. Isn't badminton her favourite sport? Yes, it is. Four. Who's he? Five. Sorry, we're late. Actually, you aren't. We haven't started yet. Six. Is she happy at the new school? Yes, she is. She likes it a lot.
Skills 1 Speaking Activity 4 Listen to two students calling a child helpline and complete the notes. Then use the notes to role play the callers. Hi, I'm from Hanoi. I'm in my last year of high school. I'm feeling a bit depressed about my situation. I've been studying really hard to satisfy my parents and have always had good grades. But last week they said they didn't want me to go to art school to be a designer. They want me to be a doctor. I feel confused. I don't know what to say to my parents. My name's Lom. I'm 13 and I'm from Ho Chi Minh City. I made a friend playing online games and we've met several times in real life to play video games in internet cafes. Last week, he told me he needed 5 million dong and asked if I could help him. I said no, but two days ago, he said he would make my life difficult if I didn't give him the money. I'm a bit worried. Should I tell somebody about this? Skills 2 Listening Activity 1A Listen to an interview with Miss Sweetie, the advice columnist of 14 Magazine. So, how do you like this work? Oh, very much. I feel like I'm living my teenagers again. <laughs> but really, it's great that I can help our dear readers in this way. Do you find it difficult to give advice? Well, yes. I take time to think of the best possible advice that I can give. I think it's most important that we put ourselves in other people's shoes. So it's about being able to empathise. Exactly. But even so, we also need to be very careful about how to put the advice into words. We need to be sensitive. It's not only about giving the best solution, it's also about helping the person get over the negative feelings. For example, I often use it might be a good idea to, rather than you ought to. Or perhaps, I think you should, for me, sounds much better than you must. English 9, Book 1, Unit 4, Life in the Past. Getting started. Activity 1. Listen and read. This is a present for you, son. A kite! How cool! Thank you, Dad. I made it for you, just like your grandfather used to make one for me. Is it a family tradition? Yes, for generations. I love it. So when you were a kid, what did you used to do for entertainment? Oh, it was all very simple back then. We didn't have television or the internet. A mobile movie team used to come once every two months and everyone from the village would be there. The children were always early, trying to get a place near the screen. I suppose it was a special occasion, wasn't it? Sure. I wish there were movie teams like that now. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Then how did you get to know about the world outside? We had the radio. Actually, only wealthy people did. The whole village used to listen to the news programmes through a loudspeaker. Wow, I can't imagine that. I know. The world's changed a lot, son. It's much easier now. Do you miss the past, Dad? 
I suppose I do. Sometimes I wish I could go back to that time. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five. Listen and underline the auxiliary verbs which are stressed. Then, practice saying the sentences. One. Life will be improved in those remote areas. Two. They can see the rain coming in from the west. Three. You did make me laugh. Four. He hasn't handed in his assignment. Five. I don't like the idea of going there at night. Six. Sam doesn't like fast food, but I do. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity six. Underline an auxiliary if it is stressed. Then listen, check, and repeat the sentences. One. The men in my village used to catch fish with a spear. Could you do that? No, I couldn't. Two. I have told you many times not to leave the door open. Three. We're going to visit Howick, a historical village. Four. You aren't going to the party. Is it because you can't dance? I can dance. Look. Five. I hope she doesn't do any damage to the car. Don't worry, she does know how to drive. Skills two. Listening. Activity one. An old man is talking about his school days. Listen and decide if the statements are true, false, or not given. I went to a village school. In fact, there was only one classroom for fifteen students of different ages, both boys and girls, and one teacher who taught everything. The school didn't have a name, so we just called it our school. We used to walk to school. Some children went barefooted. At school, we learnt to read and to write. We also learnt a little maths and history. There were no science lessons, and we didn't have exams either. Although our school was small, it had strict rules. We had to behave ourselves. We stood up and bowed to greet our teacher. At the start of every lesson, we could talk only when we were allowed to. However, we had no homework and no extra classes. I had a lot of time to play outside and to help my parents in the house. I loved my school and those school days. Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Listen again and fill the blanks with the correct information. I went to a village school. In fact, there was only one classroom for fifteen students of different ages, both boys and girls, and one teacher who taught everything. The school didn't have a name. So we just called it our school. 
We used to walk to school. Some children went barefooted. At school, we learnt to read and to write. We also learnt a little maths and history. There were no science lessons, and we didn't have exams either. Although our school was small, it had strict rules. We had to behave ourselves. We stood up and bowed to greet our teacher at the start of every lesson. We could talk only when we were allowed to. However, we had no homework and no extra classes. I had a lot of time to play outside and to help my parents in the house. I loved my school and those school days. English Nine, Book One, Unit Five: Wonders of Vietnam. Getting started. Activity One. Listen and read. Guess what? I'm going to Hue City next week. That's great. Are you excited? Very. You've been there, haven't you? Yes, I have. Three times actually. It's an amazing place. How are you getting there? My father suggests we should go by air. That's too expensive. I suggest going by train. You can meet people and see a lot of beautiful sights from the train. That sounds better. And do you know any good places to stay in Hue City? I'd recommend the Romance Hotel. I can give you the address if you like. Great, thanks. What's the best way to get around? It's probably best to use rickshaws. It's said that they're quicker and cheaper than taxis. Hmm, that's good to know. So, what are the things we shouldn't miss? Any good museums? Uh, no. Don't bother going to the museums. There are much better things to see there. You should definitely see the Royal Citadel. It's said that this complex of monuments is one of the wonders of Vietnam. In fact, it's listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Yes, that's what I've heard. So, what else is worth seeing? A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity four. Listen and repeat, paying attention to the words in red, in each pair of sentences. One. This is a solution, but not the only one. Attempts to find a solution have failed. Two. I'm fond of bananas. Bananas are what I'm fond of. Three. It's not trick and treat. It's trick or treat. I need Peter and Mary, or John and Nick to help me. Four. It's good but expensive. You shouldn't put but at the end of the sentence. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five. Read the mini talks and underline the short words. For the, from, and, but, at, of, to. You think use the strong form. Then listen. And check. One. Where are you from? I'm from Hanoi. Two. Can you come and check this paragraph for me? 
It's okay, but you shouldn't use and at the beginning of the paragraph. Three. Did you ask her to join our group? I've asked her several times, but she doesn't want to. Four. Is this letter from Peter? No, the letter is to him, not from him. Communication. Activity one. Listen to the radio program from fourteen. Then decide whether the following statements are true or false. Welcome to our game show called What's What. Please welcome our three guests, Mary, Linda, and Wang, who will be taking part in the game today. Good, Good evening, evening, everyone. Now, the rules of the game are simple. I will read out six sentences that describe one of the wonders of Vietnam, either natural or man-made. This description won't include the proper names of any places. My three contestants have to work out what the wonder is. Whoever gives the correct answer first is the winner. Sounds easy. Well, let's see. You are the winner and get a special gift if you can give the correct answer before I finish reading out all six sentences. But if you give the incorrect answer, you're out of that round of the game. Exciting. Now, do all of you understand how to play the game? Yes. yes. Okay then, let's play. What's what? Communication. Activity two. Listen to the next part of the radio program, then fill in the gaps with the words or numbers you hear. First sentence. It's a natural wonder in the central part of our country. Duong, do you want to risk the answer? Yes, it's easy. That's Phomya Cave. No, sorry, that's incorrect. So you're out of this round, Young. Oh dear. Second sentence. It's a spectacular cave located two hundred meters above sea level, near the west branch of a highway. Do either of you have the answer, Mary and Linda? No, not yet. Not me. Okay, so I will continue with the third sentence. It's situated in a national park. Is it Stone Cave in Kian Gang? No, Kian Gang isn't in the centre of the country, Linda. So we have only one person, Mary, still in the game now. So nervous. And the fourth sentence: the cave was discovered by a local man in two thousand and five. I know. It must be Tian Dung or Paradise Cave in Quan Bin. Correct, Mary. Congratulations. You gave the correct answer before I read out the sixth sentence, so you win this round of the game and get a special gift. Skills two. Listening. Activity one. Listen to what a tourist says about Harlong Bay, and decide whether the following statements are true or false. It is said that Harlong Bay is a magical place, attracting more tourists than ever since UNESCO's recognition of this beautiful spot. It is situated in the northeast region of Vietnam, with its rich history and picturesque setting. Halong Bay is the perfect destination for any tourist. Halong Bay is one of the most extraordinary natural wonders you will ever see. Viewed from any angle, Halong Bay looks like a work of art. It has one thousand nine hundred and sixty-nine islands, concentrated in two main zones: the southeast, belonging to Bai Tu Lom Bay, and the southwest. Belonging to Harlong Bay, 
At the centre of the islands, there are wonderful caverns, such as Tien Kum, Dao Go, Sun Sot, and Tam Kum. For those interested in history, a visit to Van Dun Island, Poem Mountain, and the Bakdang River is a must. It is now known that Harlom was one of the places where humans first existed. Don't miss out on a visit to Harlom Bay. With its long history and astounding natural beauty, it is truly unforgettable. Skills 2 Listening Activity 2 Listen again and complete the data chart. It is said that Harlem Bay is a magical place, attracting more tourists than ever since UNESCO's recognition of this beautiful spot. It is situated in the northeast region of Vietnam. With its rich history and picturesque setting, Harlem Bay is the perfect destination for any tourist. Harlem Bay is one of the most extraordinary natural wonders you will ever see. Viewed from any angle, Harlem Bay looks like a work of art. It has 1,969 islands, concentrated in two main zones, the southeast, belonging to Bai Tu Lom Bay, and the southwest, belonging to Harlem Bay. At the centre of the islands, there are wonderful caverns, such as Tien Kum, Dao Go, Sun Sot, and Tam Kum. For those interested in history, a visit to Van Dun Island, Poem Mountain and the Bakdang River is a must. It is now known that Harlom was one of the places where humans first existed. Don't miss out on a visit to Harlom Bay. With its long history and astounding natural beauty, it is truly unforgettable. English 9, Book 1 Unit 6 Vietnam, Then and Now Getting Started Activity 1 Listen and Read Can you believe it's the school's 60th anniversary? I know. I really like the photo exhibition. It's fascinating to see how the school used to look. Right. The photos explain a lot about our school in the past. Look, these two pictures were taken in 1970. Wow, that long ago. The school looks more like thatched houses with paddy fields all around. You can see there were only a few classrooms and the walls were made of mud and straw and, look, trenches. I think that was during the war, so it was necessary to have the trenches right there. Ha! The students in this picture are wearing rubber sandals and straw hats. Hey, and these pictures were taken in 1985. Look at the broken tiled roof and wooden window frames. And some of them are missing. Yes, I can't imagine how those students could study in such poor conditions. Right. Things have improved considerably now. We have everything. Comfortable classrooms, learning facilities like computer rooms. Yeah, we also have nice uniforms and proper shoes. We're much luckier these days, but I'm not sure our grades are better. A closer look, one. Pronunciation. Activity five. 
Write each sentence in the box next to its pattern. Then listen, check, and repeat. One. I know. That long. Don't cry. Two. Go away. Three. Keep going. Four. Don't turn left. Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Nick is talking to Mrs. Ha, Young's mother, about her family in the past. Listen to the conversation. And fill in the blanks. So, how many generations shared a house when you were young, Mrs. Ha? Well, unlike today, people of my generation mostly lived in extended families. Really? How many of you were there? Nine. My grandparents, my uncle, his wife, and kids, my parents, and me. And did you each have a private room? Like now? No, we shared most things, even the bedrooms and bathroom. I can't imagine. How about meals? Meal times were great because we could have time together every day. We talked about our day, problems at work, or things happening in the village. It sounds great. So, who did the shopping and cooking? Mostly my grandma. She was very hard working. And kind, caring, and tolerant. Wow, you all must have been tolerant to get along so well. Yes, this is especially true when it came to decision making. What happened then? We didn't always agree, but we learned to talk, listen, and compromise. Our granddad made the final decision, and we followed. Hmm, sounds fascinating. Skills two. Listening. Activity three. Listen again, and decide if the following statements are true or false. So, how many generations shared a house when you were young, Mrs. Ha? Well, unlike today. People of my generation mostly lived in extended families. Really? How many of you were there? Nine. My grandparents, my uncle, his wife, and kids, my parents, and me. And did you each have a private room like now? No. We shared most things, even the bedrooms and bathroom. I can't imagine. How about meals? Meal times were great. Because we could have time together every day, we talked about our day, problems at work, or things happening in the village. It sounds great. So, who did the shopping and cooking? Mostly my grandma. She was very hardworking, and kind, caring, and tolerant. Wow! You all must have been tolerant to get along so well. Yes. This is especially true when it came to decision making. What happened then? We didn't always agree, but we learned to talk, listen, and compromise. Our granddad made the final decision, and we followed. Hmm, sounds fascinating. English Nine, Book Two, Unit Seven, Recipes and Eating Habits. Getting Started. Activity One. Listen 
and read. Today we're making a prawn salad, which is a favourite of mine. Fantastic! I love salad. The salad is simple but delicious. Here are the ingredients. Prawns, celery, spring onion, mayonnaise, lemon juice, salt and pepper. What should I do first, Mum? Get a big bowl for me. And then, can you wash the celery? Sure. I can wash the spring onions if you like, Mrs. Warner. Please do. I'll boil the prawns. So, do English people eat lots of salad? Yes, especially in the summertime. People often serve salad as a starter, but salads also make a healthy lunch or supper. You're right. They're so versatile, and you can put anything in a salad. Mum, the prawns are pink now. They're pink? Yes. Good. They're ready. I'll drain them. Nick, can you peel them? Me, could you chop the celery and spring onions? You should be careful if you use the red knife. It's sharp. Right. Everything's ready. What do we do next? Okay. First, combine the prawns and celery in the bowl. Add two tablespoons of mayonnaise, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and some lemon juice. Now mix all the ingredients well. Okay. Finally, add the spring onion on top. Now we cover the bowl and leave it in the fridge for an hour. You've done a good job, both of you. I can't wait to try it. Yeah, I'm starving. An hour is a long time. Getting started. Activity two. Write the name of each dish in the box under each picture. A. Cob salad. B. Sushi. C. Steak pie. D. Fajitas. E. Lasagna. F. Mango sticky rice. G. Beef noodle soup. H. Curry. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five. Listen to the conversations. Draw a falling arrow or rising arrow at the end of each line. Practice the conversations with a partner. One. What do we need to make a pizza? A pizza base, some cheese, some bacon, an onion, and an apple. An apple? Yes, an apple. Two. What's for dinner? We're eating out tonight. We're eating out. Right. Three. I can't eat this dish. Why not? I'm allergic to prawns. Allergic to prawns? Yes. My skin turns red when I eat them. Communication. Activity. 2a. Now, listen to the first part of a talk where me is presenting how to prepare the ingredients. Check your answers. Part one. Pumpkin soup is my family's favourite soup. We usually have it for breakfast with some slices of bread. It's quick and simple to cook. The ingredients are. A kilo of pumpkin, two shallots, two sticks of celery, two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of fresh cream, and a pinch of salt. Before cooking, peel the pumpkin and chop it into cubes. Peel the shallots and slice them. Next, wash the celery and remove the leaves. Communication. 
Activity 2B. Listen to the first part of the talk again. Fill each blank with a word or phrase. Part 1. Pumpkin soup is my family's favourite soup. We usually have it for breakfast with some slices of bread. It's quick and simple to cook. The ingredients are a kilo of pumpkin, two shallots, two sticks of celery, two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of fresh cream, and a pinch of salt. Before cooking, peel the pumpkin and chop it into cubes. Peel the shallots and slice them. Next, wash the celery and remove the leaves. Communication Activity 3B Listen to the second part of the talk and check your answers. Part 2 Here are the steps to make the soup. Heat the butter in a deep pan, add the shallots and celery and stir-fry for a few minutes. Add the pumpkin and stir-fry for a few more minutes. Add 750 milliliters of water and a pinch of salt and cook until the pumpkin is tender. Cool for 10 minutes. Puree the soup in a mixer until it is smooth. Add the cream and simmer for 2 to 3 minutes. For the finishing touch, garnish it with some celery leaves. Pumpkin soup is very healthy. It's a good source of fibre, minerals and vitamins, especially vitamin A. If you eat this soup regularly, you can improve your eyesight and protect yourself from certain cancers. Communication Activity 3C Listen to the second part again. What are the health benefits of this dish? Part 2 Here are the steps to make the soup. Heat the butter in a deep pan, add the shallots and celery and stir-fry for a few minutes. Add the pumpkin and stir-fry for a few more minutes. Add 750 milliliters of water and a pinch of salt and cook until the pumpkin is tender. Cool for 10 minutes. Puree the soup in a mixer until it is smooth. Add the cream and simmer for two to three minutes. For the finishing touch, garnish it with some celery leaves. Pumpkin soup is very healthy. It's a good source of fiber, minerals and vitamins, especially vitamin A. If you eat this soup regularly, you can improve your eyesight and protect yourself from certain cancers. Skills 2 Listening Activity 2 14 Radio is asking two students about their eating habits. Listen to what they say and decide if the statements are true or false. I don't have a proper breakfast. I never have time because I always get up late. Normally, my mum buys a packet of biscuits and I have some on the school bus. At lunchtime, I'm always hungry. So I have a hamburger, a packet of crisps and a cola. I can easily get them at the school canteen. For dinner, I like fried beef, noodles and eggs. I don't really eat vegetables because they aren't tasty. My mum says my eating habits are unhealthy. I'm thinking about changing them. If I continue eating like this, I may become overweight. My brother doesn't have healthy eating habits. But I do. For breakfast, I usually have a bowl of cereal, a glass of milk and a banana. 
It's important to start a new day with a good breakfast, so I tend to have nutritious things. I don't buy lunch at school. Instead, I prepare my lunch box with two slices of bread, a boiled egg, and salad. Sometimes my mom makes sushi for my lunch. In the evening, my mom and I cook dinner. My favorite is steamed fish. Lean grilled chicken is also a dish I like for dinner. Skills 2 Listening Activity 3 Listen again and complete the table. Use no more than three words for each blank. I don't have a proper breakfast. I never have time because I always get up late. Normally, my mum buys a packet of biscuits and I have some on the school bus. At lunchtime, I'm always hungry, so I have a hamburger, a packet of crisps and a cola. I can easily get them at the school canteen. For dinner, I like fried beef, noodles and eggs. I don't really eat vegetables because they aren't tasty. My mum says my eating habits are unhealthy. I'm thinking about changing them. If I continue eating like this, I may become overweight. My brother doesn't have healthy eating habits, but I do. For breakfast, I usually have a bowl of cereal, a glass of milk and a banana. It's important to start a new day with a good breakfast, so I tend to have nutritious things. I don't buy lunch at school. Instead, I prepare my lunchbox with two slices of bread, a boiled egg and salad. Sometimes my mom makes sushi for my lunch. In the evening, my mom and I cook dinner. My favorite is steamed fish. Lean grilled chicken is also a dish I like for dinner. English 9, Book 2, Unit 8, Tourism. Getting started. Activity 1. Listen and read. Hi, Cho. How are things? Good. Have you made up your mind about where to go on holiday? Well, I've narrowed it down to two countries. My first choice is France and my second is Japan. What do you think? Well, France is one of the largest countries in Europe. Since we've got a four-week summer holiday, you could go on a cycling tour of the country or go on a package tour. No, I'm not into package tours. I'd like to visit the Alps and Mont Blanc, the highest mountain in Western Europe. I'd also love to explore Paris and go sightseeing in the historic city of Versailles. Sounds exciting. I think it's quite warm there, much warmer than in Britain. I can just picture you, tanned and relaxed, tasting delicious local specialities like frogs' legs and snails. Ha <laughs> ha. That's not really my cup of tea. Perhaps I should go to Japan and stay at a seaside resort, eating sushi and sashimi every day. Anyhow, Japan is only my second choice. Right. So what do your parents think about your plans? Oh, they're cool. I'm glad that they let me make my own decisions. Lucky you. Whatever you decide, you'll have a good time. So what about you? Planning anything? Well, my family... A closer look, one. Pronunciation. Activity five. Listen and repeat the following mini talks, paying attention to the tone in the questions. One. Where would you like to go sightseeing? I'd like to go to Australia most of all. Two. 
What do you think of the newly discovered cave? Oh, fantastic. Three. Have you been sightseeing all day? Yeah. We've been to the old pagoda, the orchid garden, and the open air market. Four. Is Egypt a famous tourist attraction? Yes. Millions of people go there every year. A closer look, one. Pronunciation. Activity six. Mark the questions with falling or falling rising arrows and practice the conversation with a partner. Then listen to check your pronunciation. What's the matter, Janet? I'm looking for my passport. It seems to be lost. Have you already searched your purse? Not yet. Oh, where are my glasses? They may be in your plastic bag. Where is it? Oh, no, it's not here. Have I dropped it on the plane? Oh, my God. What should I do now? Let's report it to the customs officer. Skills 2 Listening Activity 2 Listen to the lecture and tick true or false. Thanks to the widespread use of modern means of transport, people have more choice of holiday destination and can now visit even the remotest parts of the world. Tourism has certainly become an important factor in the development of many countries. An obvious benefit of tourism is that it plays a key role in economic growth. It contributes greatly to the income of a region or country. It also brings job opportunities to all kinds of people and therefore helps promote prosperity in diverse fields. Another positive aspect of tourism is that it helps promote international understanding and cooperation among nations. In addition, tourism can improve the standard of living of local or rural communities so young people are encouraged to stay in their hometown to build a good life rather than move to big cities. Finally, tourism brings cultural benefits, as travellers learn about the history and culture of a place and spread them around the world. On the other hand, the drawbacks of tourism can't be denied. Skills 2 Listening. Activity 3. Listen again and choose the correct answer. Thanks to the widespread use of modern means of transport, people have more choice of holiday destination and can now visit even the remotest parts of the world. Tourism has certainly become an important factor in the development of many countries. An obvious benefit of tourism is that it plays a key role in economic growth. It contributes greatly to the income of a region or country. It also brings job opportunities to all kinds of people and therefore helps promote prosperity in diverse fields. Another positive aspect of tourism is that it helps promote international understanding and cooperation among nations. In addition, Tourism can improve the standard of living of local or rural communities, so young people are encouraged to stay in their hometown to build a good life rather than move to big cities. Finally, tourism brings cultural benefits, as travellers learn about the history and culture of a place and spread them around the world. On the other hand, the drawbacks of tourism can't be denied. English 9, Book 2, Unit 9, English in the World.
Getting started. Activity 1. Listen and read. Welcome to English Club. Today I'm going to do a quick quiz to check your knowledge of the English language. Question 1. Is English the language which is spoken by most people in the world? Of course it is. Incorrect. Chinese is the language which is spoken by most people in the world. Question 2. Does English have the largest vocabulary? Yes, with approximately 500,000 words and 300,000 technical terms. Yes, spot on. This is due to the openness of the English language. English has borrowed words from many other languages. Yeah, if there weren't so many words, it would be easier for us to master it. Haha, <laughs> but the simplicity of form makes English easy to learn. Many English words have been simplified over the centuries. Now, question three. Who can tell me an English word that can operate as a noun, a verb, and an adjective? I think the word subject can operate as noun, verb, and adjective. Excellent! In English, the same words can operate as many parts of speech. That's due to its flexibility. Question four. What is the longest word in English which has only one vowel? Is it length? No, I think it's strength. That's right, V. Lastly, question five. Who can tell me at least three varieties of English? American English, Australian English, and, uh, yes, Indian English. A closer look, one. Pronunciation. Activity four. Listen and repeat, paying attention to the tones of the underlined words in each conversation. One. I'd like some oranges, please. But we don't have any oranges. Two. What would you like, sir? I'd like some oranges. Three. I'll come here tomorrow. But our shop is closed tomorrow. Four. When is your shop closed? It is closed tomorrow. A closer look, one. Pronunciation. Activity 5. Listen to the conversations. Do you think the voice goes up or down at the end of each second sentence? Draw a suitable arrow at the end of each line. 1. Tom found a watch on the street. No, he found a wallet on the street. 2. Where did Tom find this watch? He found it on the street. 3. Let's have some coffee. But I don't like coffee. 4. Let's have a drink. What would you like? I'd like some coffee. 5. This hat is nice. I know it's nice, but it's expensive. 6. This bed is big. I know it's big, but that one's bigger. A closer look, one. Pronunciation. Activity six. Read the conversation. Does the voice go up or down on the underlined words? Draw a suitable arrow at the end of each line. Then, listen, check and repeat. What make of TV shall we buy? Let's get the Samsung. I think we should get the Sony. It's really nice. But the Samsung is nicer. But the Sony has a guarantee. They both have a guarantee. How much is the Sony? It's $600. It's too expensive. I know it's expensive, 
But it's of better quality. They're both of good quality. Skills too. Listening. Activity one. Listen to four different people talking about speaking and learning languages. Match the summaries to each speaker. There is one extra summary. My first language is French, but I live near the border, so I'm reasonably good at German. I can also get by in Italian. We went to Rome last summer, and I picked up the basics. My mother is Spanish. And my father is French, so I'm bilingual. I'm also fluent in English, which I need for my job. I can have a conversation in Italian, but it's a bit rusty. I used to be quite bad at English. I knew a few words of everyday English that I learnt at school, but I couldn't speak a word of anything else. Last summer, I went to England on holiday. While I was travelling around the country. I picked up enough words and phrases to get by. I was told that my pronunciation was quite good, so when I got home, I decided to learn English properly. Last year, I got a job in a multinational company, so I had to learn English. A friend recommended an English center, and I have been going there for six months. I always enjoy the lessons. And the language is taught in a communicative way. I think I've learned a lot since I started. It's not all fun, though. At the moment, I'm studying for my first exam. Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Listen to the extracts again and answer the questions. My first language is French, but I live near the border, so I'm reasonably good at German. I can also get by in Italian. We went to Rome last summer, and I picked up the basics. My mother is Spanish, and my father is French, so I'm bilingual. I'm also fluent in English, which I need for my job. I can have a conversation in Italian, but it's a bit rusty. I used to be quite bad at English. I knew a few words of everyday English that I learnt at school, but I couldn't speak a word of anything else. Last summer, I went to England on holiday. While I was travelling around the country, I picked up enough words and phrases to get by. I was told that my pronunciation was quite good. So when I got home, I decided to learn English properly. Last year, I got a job in a multinational company, so I had to learn English. A friend recommended an English center, and I have been going there for six months. I always enjoy the lessons, and the language is taught in a communicative way. I think I've learned a lot since I started. It's not all fun, though. At the moment, I'm studying for my first exam. English nine, book two, unit ten, space travel. Getting started. Activity one. Listen and read. Wow, is that you in this photo, the youngest astronaut in the world doing a spacewalk? <laughs> yeah, it was in a museum in Sweden. You look so excited. Well, that trip made me crazy about space. Before I turned ten, I'd already collected lots of books about the universe. 
I'd learnt about the planets, the stars, satellites, rockets and stuff. You know, last year I visited an astronomy museum and I touched a meteorite. A meteorite? What was it like? Honestly, it wasn't as impressive as I'd expected. It was just like an ordinary piece of rock. But perhaps it was from Mars. Think of that. Maybe. Do you think there could be life on Mars? It's possibly habitable. It once had an ocean. Who knows? In 20 years we might be flying there on a discovery mission. Ha! <laughs> but we'd need to do some serious training first. They say you practice by scuba diving in a flight suit. That's right. And you also have to experience microgravity on a parabolic flight. What's that? The plane flies at high altitude, then it climbs sharply for a few seconds and ascends sharply, a bit like a roller coaster. The people inside the plane start to float. I'd love to do that. Sounds a bit scary. But let's take a look at your rock collection. There may be something interesting here. Yes, perhaps a meteorite that landed on Earth from the moon. A closer look, one. Pronunciation. Activity five. Practice saying the statements and short dialogues. Then listen to the recording and check your pronunciation. One. Wow, your backpack is heavy. Well, I didn't put much in it. Just two t-shirts, one pair of jeans, a telescope and my rock collection. Two. On his farm, his father used to have five horses, four cows, four hens and one cat. Three. What do you think the universe includes? I think it includes stars, planets and galaxies. Four. Which of the following do you think can follow the verb launch to form a phrase? I think they are launch a satellite, launch a rocket and launch a spacecraft. Five. Can you see anything from there? Yes, I can see a small red house, a garden, a bicycle, a lake and a boat. Skills 2 Listening Activity 1 Look at the pictures and discuss with your partner what is happening in them. Can you guess what the recording is about? Now, listen and check. Dreaming of a holiday sunbathing on Mars or playing some sports at a lunar resort and spa? While it may take decades for these ideas to come true, space tourism, which is space travel for recreational, leisure or business purposes, is becoming more realistic. Since 2001, the American company Space Adventures has flown tourists to the International Space Station to live and work alongside professional astronauts for up to 10 days. The company now offers a service called Spacewalk, where clients can leave the ISS and float above the Earth. It also plans to launch by 2018 its circumlunar mission, which takes clients to within 100 kilometers of the Moon's surface. Virgin Galactic, the world's first space line, has been preparing to launch its first manned space flight. By 2015, almost 700 people from more than 50 different countries have paid deposits at the price of $250,000 per ticket. The possibility of traveling into space sounds wonderful, but it has been criticized as well. People say it's costly, dangerous and unsustainable since its growth could cause environmental problems including speeding up global warming. Skills 2 
Listening. Activity 2. Listen again, then answer the questions with no more than three words. Dreaming of a holiday sunbathing on Mars or playing some sports at a lunar resort and spa? While it may take decades for these ideas to come true, space tourism, which is space travel for recreational, leisure or business purposes, is becoming more realistic. Since 2001, the American company Space Adventures has flown tourists to the International Space Station to live and work alongside professional astronauts for up to 10 days. The company now offers a service called Spacewalk, where clients can leave the ISS and float above the Earth. It also plans to launch by 2018 its circumlunar mission, which takes clients to within 100 kilometers of the Moon's surface. Virgin Galactic, the world's first space line, has been preparing to launch its first manned space flight. By 2015, almost 700 people from more than 50 different countries have paid deposits at the price of $250,000 per ticket. The possibility of travelling into space sounds wonderful, but it has been criticised as well. People say it's costly, dangerous and unsustainable since its growth could cause environmental problems including speeding up global warming. Skills 2 Listening Activity 3 Match the numbers to their references. Then, listen and check your answers. Dreaming of a holiday sunbathing on Mars or playing some sports at a lunar resort and spa? While it may take decades for these ideas to come true, space tourism, which is space travel for recreational, leisure or business purposes, is becoming more realistic. Since 2001, the American company Space Adventures has flown tourists to the International Space Station to live and work alongside professional astronauts for up to 10 days. The company now offers a service called Spacewalk, where clients can leave the ISS and float above the Earth. It also plans to launch by 2018 its circumlunar mission, which takes clients to within 100 kilometers of the Moon's surface. Virgin Galactic, the world's first space line, has been preparing to launch its first manned space flight. By 2015, almost 700 people from more than 50 different countries have paid deposits at the price of $250,000 per ticket. The possibility of travelling into space sounds wonderful, but it has been criticised as well. People say it's costly, dangerous and unsustainable since its growth could cause environmental problems including speeding up global warming. English 9 Book 2 Unit 11 Changing Roles in Society Getting Started Activity 1 Listen and Read we have invited some students from Oak Tree School in Happy Valley to this Beyond 2030 Forum, and they are going to share with us their vision of the future. Would you like to go first, Fum? I believe the biggest change will take place within the school system. Apart from at school, we will also be learning from places which will give us real-life knowledge and experience, such as at a railway station, in a company, or on a farm. I agree. This real-life application of learning will give us a sense of participation, a feeling that we are part of the process. 
And what about the role of teachers? Ah, they will be more like facilitators rather than information providers. Fascinating. How else do you see the future, Nguyen? Well, I think the role of fathers will drastically change. Oh yes? In what way? The modern father will not necessarily be the breadwinner of the family. He may be externally employed, or he may stay at home to take care of his children. And do the housework? Yes, it's work, paid or not, isn't it? Absolutely. The benefit will be that children will see their fathers more often and have a closer relationship with them. I don't see much of my dad, but I love every moment I spend with him. Well, we are certainly covering some interesting topics. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five. Listen carefully and tick the correct box. Then listen again and repeat. One. No one can deny it. Two. All of us can see your point. Three, we will help him with the money. Four, you will be cooking. Five, well, you may be right. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity six. Mark Mike's sentences with falling or rising arrows. Then listen and check. We have to educate the public about wildlife. Yes, that's important. And we must act to save endangered species. That helps. Keeping wild animals in zoos can help protect them. That's an important point. Zoos can make money for their conservation programs through charging entrance fees. Hmm. Yes, I suppose so. Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Listen to the description of some changes in the roles of women in Kenya. Decide if the statements are true or false. Back in the mid 20th century, Kenya was a more male-dominated society compared to today. Men were ahead of women in both education and employment, but the situation has changed a lot since then. More and more women work these days. They earn to support their families. As well as to be financially independent, more women study nowadays. Higher education has witnessed a great rise in the number of women attending colleges and universities. Let's look at some figures. In 1995, 65% of Kenyan females stayed at home as housewives. This number dropped dramatically to 47% in 2010. It is predicted that this number will keep falling to around 30% in 2025. Only 22% of university students were girls in Kenya in 1995. 15 years later, in 2010, this number went up to 36%. Research shows that it will keep rising, and in 2025, about 48% of the student population will be made up of females. Skills two. Listening. Activity three. Listen again to part two, and fill the blanks with the correct information. Let's look at some figures. In 1995, 65% of Kenyan females stayed at home as housewives. This number dropped dramatically to 47% in 2010. 
It is predicted that this number will keep falling to around 30% in 2025. Only 22% of university students were girls in Kenya in 1995. Fifteen years later, in 2010, this number went up to 36%. Research shows that it will keep rising, and in 2025, about 48% of the student population will be made up of females. English 9, Book 2, Unit 12, My Future Career. Getting Started Activity 1 Listen and Read I've been choosing my school subjects for next year. I've decided to take a vocational GCSE along with some traditional academic subjects. A vocational GCSE? What's that? Well, GCSEs are secondary certificates of education, which are studied by students aged between 14 to 16. In vocational subjects, students can study a work sector like applied business, design, health, or tourism. Isn't it hard to study both academic and vocational subjects at the same time? And isn't it too soon to be doing vocational training? Well, no. They offer an applied approach to learning, so it's not too difficult or too soon. I think it adds variety. Oh, I see. What area are you interested in? Leisure and tourism. So, what job opportunities are there in tourism? A lot. You can work as a housekeeper, receptionist, tour guide, lodging manager, chef, or event planner. You can also work in customer service. Sounds interesting. What if you change your mind later? No worries. I can still progress to further education to take A-levels. With A-levels, I can go to college or university. What about you? My dad is encouraging me to choose biology, chemistry, and physics. Wow. To become a doctor? Yeah, we've discussed becoming a doctor, but I may also become a biologist. A Closer Look 1 Pronunciation Activity 4 Listen to the conversations between Jenny and Tom. Notice how Tom uses the tones in his replies. Then, practice the conversation with a partner. 1. The new office is pretty. Pretty? It's amazing. 2. My new computer is OK. OK. It's fantastic. 3. The canteen is good. Good? It's wonderful. 4. My colleagues are OK. OK. They are absolutely fantastic. 5. The working environment is pleasant. Pleasant? It's superb. 6. The view from my office is nice. Nice? It's gorgeous. A closer look, one. Pronunciation. Activity five. The responses to the pairs of sentences are the same but the speakers have opposite attitudes. Listen, draw arrows to show the tones, then repeat. 1A 
They have a new air conditioner. Brilliant. 1B. There's going to be an electricity cut today. Brilliant. 2A. I got the sack. Well done. 2B. I got a promotion again. Well done. 3A. I got an A in the exam. Excellent. 3B. I failed the exam again. Excellent. 4A. Her application was turned down. Amazing. 4B. I've been offered two jobs at the same time. Amazing. 5A. We're having a company holiday in a luxury resort. How awful. 5B. He has decided to cut down on our wages. How awful. 2. Listening. Activity 2. Fom is talking to Mrs. Warner, Nick's mother, about future jobs he and his friends want to do. Listen to the conversation and fill in the blanks with no more than three words. We had a good discussion yesterday about our future careers. Did you? With Nick? Yes, and also with Chang. Good. Nick said that you want to become a teacher. I've changed my mind. My mum is a teacher. She has mountains of work to do behind the scenes, preparing lessons, marking, giving feedback. She always has to work overtime without extra pay. I'd choose a nine-to-five job. I know. Then there's the unpleasant task of dealing with lazy or naughty students. I'm not that patient. But it's rewarding when your students are successful and they appreciate your efforts. What about Chang? She said she's interested in travelling and she's a sociable girl. She wants to become a tour guide. That sounds good. What about Nick? Nick doesn't want to spend so much time on academic subjects. He'd prefer to acquire some applied skills and get a job right after school. Did he tell you which job? He mentioned becoming a mechanic. He's fascinated by cars and he's good with his hands. I know, but it won't be easy. He'll need to learn lots of skills to do it. Skills 2 Listening Activity 3 Listen again and decide if the following statements are true or false. We had a good discussion yesterday about our future careers. Did you? With Nick? Yes, and also with Chang. Good. Nick said that you want to become a teacher. I've changed my mind. My mum is a teacher. She has mountains of work to do behind the scenes, preparing lessons, marking, giving feedback. She always has to work overtime without extra pay. I'd choose a nine-to-five job. I know. Then there's the unpleasant task of dealing with lazy or naughty students. I'm not that patient. But it's rewarding when your students are successful and they appreciate your efforts. What about Chang? She said she's interested in travelling and she's a sociable girl. She wants to become a tour guide. That sounds good. What about Nick? Nick doesn't want to spend so much time on academic subjects. He'd prefer to acquire some applied skills and get a job right after school. Did he tell you which job? He mentioned becoming a mechanic. He's fascinated by cars and he's good with his hands. I know, but it won't be easy. He'll need to learn lots of skills to do it.
English 9, Book 1. Review 1. Pronunciation. Activity 1. Listen and practice saying the sentences. Pay attention to the underlined words. 1. My town is nice and peaceful, but it isn't very big. 2. Da Nang Museum of Cham Sculpture attracts a lot of foreign visitors. 3. Were you wearing a helmet when you fell off your bike? No, I wasn't. 4. Can I go to a party tonight, Mum? OK, but please don't make noise when you come home. 5. My mum's really a good friend of mine. Is she? Mine is very strict towards me. Pronunciation Activity 2 Look at the underlined words in the sentences and mark them as weak or strong. Then listen to check and practice. 1. Is Mun happy about winning the scholarship? Yes, he is, but his parents are happier. 2. I can't understand it. Aren't you my son? I'm terribly sorry, Dad, but it isn't entirely my fault. 3. Pho Hien is a very old town in North Vietnam. Is it? Where is it located? 4. It's raining. Are they wearing raincoats? She is, but he isn't. Listening Activity 3A Listen to the conversation and answer the questions. Hi Mike, how's it going? Hi, I'm good thanks. Are you still living in the same place? Yes, I'm still in that sleepy little town. But you know, I enjoy living there. It's quiet and everyone is friendly. I don't really like the city. I feel like a stranger here. And it seems kind of dangerous, especially at night. Well, I live here in the city, as you know. We live in an apartment downtown. The city is big. And it doesn't feel as safe as a small town like yours. But I think the people here are pretty friendly. My neighbourhood is like a small town, with its own stores, cafes and restaurants. And we can enjoy all kinds of entertainment. Cinemas, museums. OK. So then on weekends, I should come into the city for all that. OK, sure. Activity 3B. Listen again and complete the sentences. Hi Mike, how's it going? Hi, I'm good thanks. Are you still living in the same place? Yes, I'm still in that sleepy little town. But you know, I enjoy living there. It's quiet and everyone is friendly. I don't really like the city. I feel like a stranger here. And it seems kind of dangerous, especially at night. Well, I live here in the city, as you know. We live in an apartment downtown. The city is big, and it doesn't feel as safe as a small town like yours. But I think the people here are pretty friendly. My neighbourhood is like a small town, with its own stores, cafes and restaurants. And we can enjoy all kinds of entertainment, cinemas... Museums. OK, 
So then on weekends, I should come into the city for all that. OK, sure. Review 2 Pronunciation Activity 1 Read the mini-talks and circle the words in red, which you think are stressed. Then, listen and check. 1. Which hotel are you staying at? The Grand Hotel. It's by the sea. Isn't it the one you stayed in last year? Yes, it is. 2. I can't find my key. Do you happen to see it anywhere? It's on the coffee table. There's nothing on the coffee table. Really? I did see it there when I was tidying up the room this morning. 3. You have to help me with this assignment. I won't. Please? Are you going to rely on others all your life? 4. Have you seen the Tomb Raider? No, I haven't. But I've seen the Smiths. Is that the film you often talk about? Yes, it is. Look, this is the trailer for it. Listening Activity 3 Listen to Nguyen's presentation about a natural wonder in Vietnam and decide if the sentences are true or false. Mop Chow has recently become a popular tourist attraction that draws travellers throughout the year. People are attracted to this lovely town to admire its endless hills. The picturesque scenery here is unlike anything else in Vietnam. Many places remain untouched by people. Apart from its fabulous scenery, Mop Chow is also famous for its local dishes, which are new to outsiders. People usually try them out of curiosity and end up falling in love with their amazing taste. Another attraction of this small town is its honest and friendly people. Visiting small villages in Mop Chow, tourists are welcomed into the locals' homes and treated with homemade corn wine. The warm and open hospitality of the people here has made it a delightful experience for domestic as well as international visitors. Located only 187 kilometres from Hanoi, Mok Chao can easily be reached by both private and public transport. English 9, Book 2 Review 3, Review 4 Language Pronunciation Activity 1A Mark the questions with falling rising or falling rising arrows. Then listen, check and repeat. A. What are you doing? Are you baking? Yes, I'm trying a recipe for Japanese cotton cheesecake. Japanese cotton cheesecake? Sounds strange. Right, but my friends say it's really delicious. Do they sell that kind of cake in bakeries? Yes but I want to make it myself. Activity 1B Mark the sentences with falling or rising arrows. Then listen, check and repeat. B. This tour is cheap. That tour is cheaper? Let's book that tour today. But the travel agent is closed today. Tomorrow is fine.
Skills. Listening. Activity three. Listen to Hum giving a presentation on his tips for learning English well. Complete the listener's notes. Use no more than three words for each blank. My tips to learn English well are not complicated. Firstly, I usually read stories and books in English. Reading them helps me widen my vocabulary and understand the context where words are used. This way, I can remember vocabulary longer and know how to use the words correctly. Secondly, to practice English grammar, I do lots of exercises from different grammar books. I find grammar in use and active grammar useful because they explain grammar thoroughly and provide learners with various types of exercise. Thirdly, I take every opportunity to speak and write English because these are my weak points. I've joined an international project which connects students from all over the world. I've made friends with four students from the USA, Australia, France, and Egypt. We write each other emails and chat on Skype. That way, I can not only improve my English skills but also enrich my knowledge of different cultures. My last tip is to be self-confident. Don't be afraid of making mistakes in the process of learning. In class. You should take part in the activities actively. If there are any things you don't understand, ask your teacher and classmates for help. These tips have helped me to become a successful English learner. Review four. Language. Pronunciation. Activity one. Draw rising or falling arrows to illustrate the correct tones. Then listen and practice saying the sentences. What do the astronauts do while they are aboard the ISS? They keep the station in good condition and do science experiments. Sounds hard. Not at all. They don't have weekends. They do. What do they do during their weekends? They do various things like watching movies, playing music, reading books, and talking to their families. Activity two. Draw arrows to illustrate the feelings and opinions of A and B. Then listen and repeat the conversation. Paying attention to the tones. In the near future, we will mostly learn online. Incredible, but we will still have actual classrooms, won't we? Sure, but teachers will no longer be knowledge providers. Really? They will be guides or facilitators. Superb. What about the students' roles? They'll be more responsible for their own learning, I think. Amazing. And they will make their own decisions. Absolutely right. Skills. Listening. Activity three A. Listen to the interview and answer the questions. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please take a seat. Did you find our office easily? Yes, I didn't have any problems. Right. Well, I can see from your CV that you are sociable and you like meeting people. Yes, I'm a very outgoing person. Well, that's exactly the kind of person our hotel needs to work at the reception desk. Why do you think you are capable of doing the job well? I'm confident dealing with different types of people. I also have a good telephone manner, so telephone work is one of my strengths. I believe I can do this work well, since I have some experience as a school receptionist, as you can see from my CV. That's great. As you know, our hotel needs someone to work shifts. Are you willing to work night shifts? I think I can manage it. Right then. Shall we give you a trial period of say, two weeks? That's fine. Thank you.
Activity 3B. Listen again and complete the sentences. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please take a seat. Did you find our office easily? Yes, I didn't have any problems. Right. Well, I can see from your CV that you are sociable and you like meeting people. Yes, I'm a very outgoing person. Well, that's exactly the kind of person our hotel needs to work at the reception desk. Why do you think you are capable of doing the job well? I'm confident dealing with different types of people. I also have a good telephone manner, so telephone work is one of my strengths. I believe I can do this work well since I have some experience as a school receptionist, as you can see from my CV. That's great. As you know, our hotel needs someone to work shifts. Are you willing to work night shifts? I think I can manage it. Right then. Shall we give you a trial period of say, two weeks? That's fine. Thank you.